And I want to do this after I use my knife every single time, and that will keep it razor sharp. It's that time again, time for the solo of our nighter in the woods. This one's going to be different, and I'll explain why here in a few minutes. However, it's going to be solo overnight, my simplified gear list for 2024. Let's get to it. So here we are. We're at the cabin in the swamp. Those that have not seen this cabin being built, and most haven't, simply YouTube search Corporal's Corner solo 10-day overnight building a cabin in the swamp, and you can see how we built this thing from the ground up. We stayed in here several nights. Um, I enjoy it. Still need to get these walls covered up and insulated. And I would like to have some type of smaller version of those cylinder wood stoves. They're about that big around, about you know two foot tall, and a stick a pipe through the wall over on this wall over here. That'd be nice. So we're not completely done with this, but it's done enough to live in, to get her done, stay out here a couple nights, and get done what I need to get done. So this is where I'm going to be at. We're currently filming the online classroom. That's why we're doing this type of video out here. I'm already out here, all the gear's out here. I'm getting this done. Talked about it for two years. I mentioned the past couple weeks, I'm gonna start filming it. Once the weather is perfect, right now the humidity is gone. So I'm taking full advantage of this and I'm gonna get it done. Those that wanna be part of an online classroom can and those that don't, no hard feelings. But I'm gonna get it done. Um, Put together what I think a basic class should be, what an intermediate class should be, what an advanced class should be, and then we're going to go from there. Now, this video right here is titled Solo Overnight, My Survival Gear for the Year 2024, or something to that effect. Here's why I'm doing that. There's been a lot of questions being asked. What am I carrying now? I used to work somewhere else. I was a 1099 independent contractor, and I carried their gear. I promoted their gear. And people are asking me now that I no longer work there, what am I promoting? What do I push? What do I use? So this video here is designed on a type of bag I would carry for a day hike. Maybe a simple overnighter, lightweight. I'm a firm believer in buy once, cry once. I want that same kit to be used as for a day hike. I could toss it in my car and use it for a get home bag. An emergency were to occur, I'm inconveniently camping somewhere, I can just pop that bag out of the trunk or out of the back seat, and I got everything I need right there. I don't gotta worry about anything. I don't have I don't want to have five or six different bags at my house. I don't want to have 20 different knives and different kit setups. There's no point in that. Um, one bag should do what you want it to do. And if it doesn't, you need to make adjustments. Now Going forward with this kit that I'm going to show you, this is just one example of what I'm going to be carrying this coming year, 2024. This is not going to be the gear list for my online classroom. However, some of the items will appear on there. When I'm done, I'll show you my Amazon affiliate link and it will say instructor bag or student bag or my kit and you can just pick the items you want. Oh, I like that knife or I like that bag or I like this. And then you can get those certain items that you want. Once the online classroom jumps off or kicks off, you'll have an option on my Amazon affiliate link that says basic class kit. And that's what I recommend. Do you have to have it? No. But I recommend those items. That way it's transferable, like I said, into other classes. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get what I'm going to be carrying, my idea of what my bag is going to be for this coming year, 2024.
I have two different options I'm going to show you. One is an old school military harness that I carried when I was in the Marine Corps. Another one is a backpack, which was military as well. The Molly 2 Patrol Pack. These are no longer being made. They're hard to find. They sell anywhere from 50 bucks in trashed out conditions up to 300 in mint condition. I sold two or three of these in the in-between range and believe me it's a good piece of gear to have but it's hard to come by. But you can find something similar. My opinion of this is for a day hike or a scout minimum 20 to 25 liter pack up to 35 to 40 liters whatever works for you. If you want to have the 35 to 40 that way you can put a bunch of gear and food inside there for a three four five day overnighters be my guest but at a minimum something between 20 and 25 liters at a very very minimum and this one here is around 25. we have an external pouch on here i'm not going to go into great detail with this but we have a small pouch and a large dump pouch on the inside with zippers that go across here adjustable shoulder straps and a chest harness okay chest strap it rides high on your back. It's supposed to. It's meant for that. It's going to come above your lumbar region. That way it's not going to interfere with the military harness. Again, this is military gear. This is what I enjoyed. This is what I used. And again, if it's not broke, I'm not going to try to fix it. I don't have, currently have a backpack I'm trying to market to you to say that that's better than this. Maybe in the future, but as of right now, I'm going to roll with what I got and keep it simple stupid. Next, the military harness. Those that have these, they're, again, they're hard to come by. You've got to piece them out. And it could be anywhere from a hundred bucks with trashed out conditions for every single piece of gear you see on this up to two and three hundred dollars. You're not paying for nostalgia. Some people think that's what it is. You're paying for items that are no longer being made. Now, at some point, there was ships floating out in the ocean that had stuff on there called new old stock. Stuff that was built 30 years ago and made 30 years ago that was just sitting there in a box, just in case the event of war. Now they've switched everything over. This stuff is no longer being made and all the new old stock is being sold off. So if you can find a dealer or somebody on eBay, Etsy, things like that, hook up with them. Cause you're gonna be able to have a good source of gear coming and going and they can simply email you and then you can simply just go down and get it. Now, this is a Y harness. Right here we have a compass pouch and ranger beads. I have two old school canteen pouches on here. They have the insulation, little like fuzz or fur on the inside of it. What you can do with this also is wet it and it will actually cool it down. A lot of people didn't know that. We have a butt pack on the back here. For the most part, this stuff is above average and in the good range. The harness was almost brand new. So there's plenty of years left on this, plenty of mileage the belt as well. If you want to see a quick video on this, type in Corporal's Corner LBE versus the LBV and you're going to see two different types of kit setups and what consists of each piece. That was a midweek video number 19. Just simply type in Corporal's Corner midweek video number 19 and you're going to see what this consists of. Now, either one that you choose, I choose both. And here's why I choose both. I can dump my pack at a campsite leave all my larger items there, throw on the harness rig, and still have the essentials in case I got stranded for the night. Now, back to what I was saying. Either one that you choose, make sure it will facilitate all the gear you intend to carry. I'm gonna have a two for one. I want to distribute my gear. Say I get separated from my backpack, I still have my harness. Or I wanna make a gigantic base camp for two or three days, and I don't wanna carry a stove, I don't wanna carry a grill, I don't wanna carry my bedroll with me. I can leave all that there, throw the harness on, and I'm in business. That's just me and that's what I prefer. Let's talk everybody's favorite knives and saws. Now over the years I've done a lot of cutting. You see me just hack down trees anywhere from half inch diameter up to probably four or five inches using a simple saw like this, a folding saw. Here's my take on knives and saws. There's a lot of theories out there, a lot of opinions, a lot of unproven theories, a lot of just talk. The reality is whatever you choose to carry your items in, 
you need to have some type of saw or knife combo in that kit. Sounds like common sense, but think about what I said. Your body, your person, that's a kit. So I want to have at least a pocket knife with some type of saw on it in my pocket at all times. Why? What if I get separated from my backpack, my canoe flips, all the what if scenarios that scare everybody to buy the gear, right? That's what survival and bushcraft is. It's scenarios that, to be brutally honest, won't happen to 99.9999999% of people, all right? But what if it does? I want some type of cutting tool system in my pocket. Now, this could be a multi-tool as well. I prefer this one right here. This is a Ranger Grip. I believe it's a 79, non-serrated. This red handle here, you can actually see it when you drop it inside the you know, bushes instead of looking for an OD green one or a brown one or even a black one. That's going to stand out. That's why I chose that color. My body is now taken care of. I have a pocket knife with a saw. Now in my backpack or in my military harness, I might want to have two separate ones. A saw that's going to do most of my hard, heavy lifting. And some type of full tang knife, like this Mora Garberg, that sells for around $79 now. There's a Mora Bushcraft Black that sells between $35 and $40. Bucks. Both of them are excellent knives. They're, once again, buy once, cry once. And in my opinion, for those that are learning or that those who want to make a career out of this, you can't go wrong with this knife. You really can't. Some people talk crap about it, but then my question is, what are you using to replace this that makes it so much better? If it's the exact same type of blade, exact same type of curvature, exact same type of weight, and the handle is roughly the same, how is that better than what I'm holding in my hand right now? It's actually not. And the best part is, you can buy these anywhere. Amazon, eBay, Etsy. Some stores even carry these. Um, you just walk in and buy them. So paying for a custom knife, waiting for it to get to you, or get one now. Your choice. And I'm not here to promote any knives either way. I'm just giving you my thoughts on something like this. So I have a backpack. I want to carry these two items. Now this could be on my body as well. And that's perfectly fine. But I already have this. So it's something to think about. How you want to carry your gear and why you want to carry it. But whatever backpacks or harnesses you're carrying, you need to carry at least these two at a bare minimum. Now, let's say you're going to go out there and you want to split firewood. Because the reality of survival is, if you're going to build structures or shelters, two and a half to three inch diameter trees is all you're ever going to need. And this will take care of that all day and twice on Sunday. There's no need for a large, gigantic buck saw or to carry around a buck saw with you if you're just going to be cutting down two and a half to three inch diameter trees. One and done. Now, should you feel that you need to have some type of axe with you, anything that's around two pounds in weight, 18 to 19 inch handle overall that passes through, that can be stuck into the sleeve of a backpack or on the side of a backpack or even inside of a backpack or even carried in your hand. It's lightweight. And in my opinion, what most hatchets or camp hatchets are used for, or camp axes, is delimbing or splitting larger diameter trees for firewood. Again, if you want to process for a shelter, here you go. If you want to make firewood, here you go. Or delimb something for a structure. This is completely optional. This one right here is the Hardcore Hammer Survival Hatchet. It has my logo on it right there. That The link to this is inside the description box. It says Hardcore Hammers. Click on it and check it out. If you're interested in something like this, use this code right here, CCUSFREE23, and you'll get free shipping site-wide. There's also an axe collar that you can buy for this for optional gear. Hockey puck, some type of, there's a uh, tool lube on there to keep it from rusting, keep it looking nice and oiled up. They actually have actual hammers on there. They have a whole bunch of other things, full-size axes as well. So check them out, Hardcore Hammers. Moving right along here, let's talk about our canteens. Why? Because everybody needs to carry some type of water with them. Water is life, and it's kind of stupid to not carry water. 
I carry the old school military canteen. Why? Because that's what I enjoy. Along with that, I carry the canteen cup. This one right here, let's see if I can see the date on this, 1989. Okay, so this thing has been around for a long time, been beat to hell, and it still comes back for more. Again, if it's not broke, why fix it? Slides right over top of your canteen, and you're in business. The one thing it can't do is I can't boil water inside this. I shouldn't want to. What I'm actually doing is I'm in the process of changing the plastic one out with a metal one. The problem is no one makes a wide mouth canteen except this titanium one right here that will fit inside the old school military pouches. Wide mouth to me is better. That way I can boil my water, disinfect it, get rid of the viruses, bacteria, protozoas, and parasites. I can then take a stick on a piece of bank line, fish it down inside there, and pull it out of the fire. I can dangle it over the fire to boil if I need to. There's a lot of advantages to having a metal container. And I want at least one metal container to disinfect that water. I can then pour it into that plastic one, and then I can go ahead and boil some more. Once that cools down, I can drink it. So having minimum one container, preferably two, is your best bet. Number 36 bank line. I have preached this for years and years and years. Those that watch my channel for the past four years, you watch me build outlandish structures, stand on them, jump on them, lay in them, sleep in them. That weigh hundreds and hundreds of pounds with more and more logs on top of them, on top of them, on top of them. To get an example, simply YouTube search Corporal's Corner Tree Fort in the Woods. It's about a three part series on there where the walls are about five foot high, just stacked. And I used number 36 bank line to construct that fort. And it's still standing to this day. And that was almost four years ago. And the bank line still holds up. This is, think of trot line for catfish. You toss it in the water. It's tarred, so it's gonna be rot resistant, not rot proof. At some point it will rot through. But it will take several years for this to actually go bad. It weighs probably a pound and you've got hundreds and hundreds of feet on here. Number I will no longer carry paracord. It's ridiculous. Paracord to me is a dinosaur. It wasn't all that back in the day, and a lot of people still carry it for like ridge lines. And you see on YouTube, every other week now, there's like a ridge line war going on. Everybody chasing the new new and convoluting it left, right, up, down, and sideways. Great, perfect. Do what works for you. Um, if I'm only gonna make paracord ridge lines, and that's an excuse to buy a paracord, then I guess it's great. Why do I need paracord when I can do everything with this? And I've shown it several times on my channel. So why carry two different things when one will suffice? Um, so again, it's keep it simple stupid. I'm gonna carry one and done. A fire starting kit. Now, I've seen people post all over YouTube and Talk about, you know, fire starting this and that. You should have this and that in 10 different ways and all natural fire starters, but it comes from a company. It's made at a company. If, if things are all natural, they don't come from a company. You walk outside your door and you find fat wood from a pine tree or you find cattail or you find, get the fluff off of the brown part looks like a corn dog or you go out there and you find cottonwood or aspen trees or tulip poplars and you need to shred the bark off or you get the sap, those are the natural ones that are in your backyard or in your mountains or in your hills or wherever you decide to go hiking after the day. Buying something from a store, you spend money first off. And second, unless they're gonna give you the same thing I just said and say, here you go, I went to my tree and I cut off a chunk of fat wood, here you go, and it's processed out, they made it at a store. So it's not natural. Okay, that's just my two cents on that. So. Back to what I'm talking about for fire starters. The only thing I'm carrying now is a roll, a one inch roll of duct tape. That is it. And this does multiple things. Everybody knows duct tape has a million and one uses. And I've shown several times that taking this one inch roll and simply rolling it into a tiny little piece and lighting it on fire, I've actually shown on my channel it's burned for 20 minutes. So in inclement weather where tinder is damp, you want to dry things out, you want to prolong that flame to get that fire going. 
I'm already carrying duct tape. People say, well, you're burning plastic. You're burning plastic. But if it's a matter of me freezing to death in the middle of the night or burn the plastic, I'm going to burn the plastic. So there's common sense that has to be thought through when you do certain things. Now, again, I'm skilled enough to walk in my backyard or on my 100 acres or over in the wildlife areas or state parks if I was stranded there and, and go, look, there's pine sap. Oh, look, there's pine needles. Oh, look, there's cottonwood bark. I know how to identify those things. But if you don't, simply carrying something like this could save your life. That's the only thing I'm carrying as far as prolonging a flame. Now, as far as an ignition source, first time every time can be a big lighter. These have never failed me. I toss them in the water, they'll float downstream. They don't sink. And you can just pick it right back up, put it in your pocket, blow the excess water out. And once that flint and that wheel are dried out, it lights right up within seconds. So why not carry something like this that will guarantee you flame? Add it to something like this that guarantees you a flame extender and then get that fire actually going and get dried out. The next choice I'm going to have is some type of ferrocium rod. This one right here is a half inch by, it's, they say six, but that's because it threads inside of this handle. This is an Exotac, made by a company called Exotac, and there's threads on here, and it screws into the handle. So if it were to break or wear out, you can order a new one. And then the back end of it here has a little spot where you can put some type of fire starting pieces of wax cotton balls or some type of impregnated, fuel impregnated cotton. All right, so this right here, the ferrocium rod is my second choice. And it guarantees me sparks that are 3000 degrees. So if you think about this, this is always gonna be a guarantee. This is my next one because it burns just as hot and it rains sparks down. But I'm still gonna need to catch something with that to cause it to actually light up. And that's where the duct tape comes back into play. I've shown on my channel several times that you can actually take the strips off of this and light them using the sparks from a ferro rod. And it will actually light the tape. Now the last one is controversial. And a lot of people carry it for nostalgia. And here's the reality, flint and steel. It's fun to do. People did it for 100 years, 200 years thousand years back in the Vikings and does it work? Yes. But is it viable? And my answer is going to be no because unless you have some type of flash tinder with you, meaning something that will catch the smallest spark or pre-made char material, say you had a 100% piece of cotton and you charred it into char cloth or you took a piece of punky wood, punk wood and turned it into char material and you carried that with you and guaranteed there was no moisture in it from the air, and you guaranteed it was preserved from the elements, that it will work every time for you, then by all means, carry something like this. If you don't have those guarantees, my question is, how do you make the punk wood into char material? How do you make the 100% cotton into char cloth if you don't have a fire already going, and you're relying on this to make your fire? That's the chicken or the egg. See where I'm going with this? Or you did roll your canoe and your char material now is wet. It's not going to work. So you'll be sitting out here all day throwing sparks that are minuscule compared to something like this, when this will light something larger and even with a piece of tape and guarantee it's going to go into flame. So I'm not dissing anybody who wants to carry this. You want to carry it, carry it. But if you think this is your go-to end-all be-all, listen to what I rewind, listen to what I just said to you. Okay. unless you have those control measures put into place with char material or char cloth most likely you're not going to get a fire going can it happen? yes anything is possible anything is possible but why would I want to screw around for three hours when I could just go or strike this This striker right here is an example of what I sell in my Etsy shop. I make these and sell them. You can see sparks raining off that 
piece of flint all day. However, when you saw it compared to the ferrocium rod, it's night and day. Which one do you want to play around with? Hoping that those tiny sparks coming off this striker is going to hit a cattail and light it when you have a guarantee the ferrocium rod is going to ignite it. So it's something to play around with. Think about it, mull it over. There's positives and negatives. Um, like I said, a lot of people carry them for nostalgia, and there's nothing wrong with that. But to solely rely on it as your end all be all, I can't take that ride. Moving right along, we have our Sunto MC2 base plate compass. It's called a base plate compass because it has a rectangular bottom on it, otherwise known as a base plate. We have a cover on here as well. It's got a signal mirror. You can signal for rescue. You can see that reflection right there, just off the lights above me. We have a sun lens or magnifying lens right there at the bottom as well that you can start fires with. So it's a multi-use item. If you want to learn more about this, go ahead and YouTube search Corporal's Corner Compass or Corporal's Corner Land Navigation and its full explanations are there two or three different times. Good thing to have, that way you can walk a straight line. That's the whole part of, point of a compass, is to walk a straight line. That way you're not walking in circles throughout the woods. I'm going to walk east until I find a house because I'm lost. And you'll walk for five days or however long it takes, but you're walking a straight line and it guarantees it using the compass. So it's something to carry with you. And I'll be carrying it from now on. The next item is a flashlight. In this case, it's a headlamp. Now, the headlamp allows me to be hands-free. It's common sense. That's what I enjoy doing. I want to walk around and be able to have a walking stick or actually be able to see what's going on around me and move bushes without having a flashlight and having to be moving all around like this. I can just keep it stationary and I can move it up and down. This one right here is the MH8 from Lead Lenser. It has a three different settings on it and a strobe option as well. But what I like the best is there is a way to focus, and you see that, from a wide beam into a narrow beam. And I believe this thing is around, I want to say, six or seven hundred lumens. So you're going on a frog gigging or something like this, it's almost a guarantee you're going to blind those bad boys and then just get them. Because, I mean, 800 lumens or 600 lumens, the lowest setting is like 400. So you're in, in the money there with that. So, um, again, LED Lenser MH8. And... It's rechargeable and it can also take batteries. So you have the option of putting batteries in your double A's or buy the rechargeable ones and then simply plug it in. Next on our list here is a three by three, 100% cotton Shimog. I used to carry bandanas, two or three of them. I used to carry two foot bandanas or a two foot by two foot. And then I realized that the Shemog here is actually the best because it does a ton of things. I use this as a face cloth to keep mosquitoes off of me. I've used it to actually put over my wide mouth canteen and immerse it in the water to strain all the crap off the water and get just, you know, the debris out of there that I can go boil the water. But the number one thing I use this for, and this is God's honest truth, is a waypoint for land navigation. I can go out somewhere and I'm walking my straight line with my compass. And I say, I'm going to stop right here. And I want to go walk around and see what resources we have. Right? I see a creek down there. But I don't want to wander around and get lost. You can drop my gear, pull out my shemog, hang it into a tree at eye level. I can see this orange or reddish color in, amongst all the green. Now I can walk as far as I want to, 360 degrees. As long as I can turn around and see this hanging from a tree, I can walk right back to my gear stuff it away, pick up my compass, and continue on that straight line where I need to be. And this is a butt saver, a godsend. Something like this. Also, you could tie it to a tree, make a gigantic flag, and wave it and signal for rescue, pop it up in the air, and you can see the size of this. This thing is huge. So, I've even been ghetto and like wadded it up for a tiny little pillow before. So there's plenty of uses for this arm sling. And the list goes on and on and on. But something bright colored like this, three foot by three foot, that will take care of all those things I've talked about. Most importantly, a waypoint to get back to where your camp is or where you were left off at. Worth its weight in gold. I've shown this over the years, off and on. This is the Helicon Swagman Roll. 
And it's basically a poncho liner, has a hood on it and everything, that you would put over your body and wear it like a poncho, but then you put a poncho over top of it to add further waterproofing to it. It can be zipped up into a sleeping bag as well, and that's what I liked the most about it was a sleeping bag system. And with a poncho wrapped around that, kind of like how we used to do in the Marine Corps back in the 90s, with a poncho liner, Woolly, and our actual poncho. The problem I have with this is nothing to do with the product. It is very nice. It's well put together. I've had it for years, and I'm happy with it. It's the price and the availability. Sometimes you can't get these things for months on end, and I've seen them go anywhere from $79 up to $179, depending on who's selling them, and making their profits or whatever. Um, so it's a hit and miss for me. I have no problem with the military uh, Whoopi poncho liner, and if somebody were to come out with one that was competitive to this with an actual competitive price that wasn't too pricey, I'd probably roll with that. So I'm not biased or non-biased. I'm just saying it's a good product and I've used it and you see it's well used. But to be really honest, most of the time I've used this and you can see dirt and grease all over this, I use it for a pillow. So um, it's an expensive pillow, but that's what I use it for. Now this winter time, I'll be wearing multiple layers and like thermals and things like that and probably be actually using a wool blanket or something like this in addition to what I'm currently wearing on my body. But during the summertime, it's a pillow. This next item right here is a old school USGI military poncho from the late 1990s. It was what we talked about earlier, the new old stock. It was brand new in a box on a ship somewhere for 25 years. Never touched, never used. The inside of it, the gluing, where the waterproofing's at, is pristine, and I've used it several, several times, making shelters, making um, plow point shelters, lean-tos, A-frames, a double A-frame where two of these are put together over a wooden frame, and I live and die by these. I, I, the reason why I say that is because this thing has kept me out of the elements for several years in the military. Those that served in the military and used this stuff, you know the longevity of it and you know how to be comfortable with it and you know what to do with it and how to maintain it. And we have no problem using it. What I found over the years is people who lack the experience with this sort of stuff, they tend to go, but they'll buy something else that's identical to military specs as well and sit here and say, well, this one's better. But then you actually look at it like the Helicon. Helicon makes a poncho. It's sewn to military specs. It fits over the swag mat roll the same way this one does. They're virtually identical with the exception of the underside of it. The waterproofing is a little bit different. However, with the Helicon poncho, I've had the snaps rip off of them two or three at a time. They just tear right off. Or well, I haven't had that problem with this one. And this is 25 years old. So, those that don't like this gear, that's your choice. But when you buy the equivalent of it and it rips apart and falls apart, that's all I need to know. And that shows me your experience level as well. So I'm gonna stick with what works. And for me, if someone were to ask me, do you want a five by seven tarp or do you want a five by seven poncho? If it's a military spec poncho or an actual authentic military poncho, either one will be fine, even the Helicon one. I'm gonna take a poncho because I can put it over my body, over my gear, and continue walking around and be, for the most part, dry underneath. And my body heat can be trapped as well, keeping me warm. Versus a tarp where I just walk around and I'm completely soaking wet unless I have rain gear to cover my entire body and my backpack to keep everything dry, I'm screwed. So I'm gonna prefer, if somebody were to ask me again, a poncho liner, a poncho system for a bedroll, or do you want a tarp and a blanket? I'm probably going to roll with a bed system for the poncho liner and the poncho first time every time. Again, because of the versatility. Let's talk about cooking really quick. You're going to see me rolling into 2024 carrying these items right here. This is a standard 6x12 grill. You see in a midweek video a while back where I installed these hooks on here and I made a swing grill. You can do that yourself and it's relatively cheap. Once you put these hooks on here, They'll stay on here, they're not going to fall off. You can slide the grill into this wax canvas pouch. 
This is from Drix Outdoors, and that's going to be once again on my Amazon affiliate link. The chains you could buy two foot of chain, three foot, four foot, five foot, whatever you want, and it stuffs right inside that pouch as well. So, something to think about you have your own portable swing grill that you can take out in the woods with you. Now, the butane, this is brand whatever, um, Olympia. Uh, I I've experimented with five or six different ones of these, and people, some of them, people have actually told me they don't freeze up during the winter time. Turn it on, the flame goes. So these suck when it's really cold outside. We're talking like 20 degrees Fahrenheit or less. But if you somehow immerse them in water, it will stay lit enough to cook or boil your water. So there's a give and a take with butane stoves. But during the fall, during you know early winter mid to late spring and summer, I'm using this every single time. Sometimes not even a fire because it's just too hot. Now the stove, I mentioned this a few videos back. I've carried this for several years. Four years of my overnighters. And this is a simple Primus stove. This is their basic model. They make an ultra light one, but this is not the ultra light. This is just the regular. And I have had large bush pots like this sitting on top of this. There's no need to convolute anything. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Something like this works perfectly. Primus has had this design wherever they got it from for a decade or more. And it is bomb proof. And it just screws on the top here. And then you just light it. And you can adjust your heat. Now I know for a fact I've shown this several times over the years and people just keep asking me, how do you sharpen your knives? What stone do you use? I don't ever use a stone. I use this butts or buttes or however you pronounce that. It's a leather strop. And this is Tormek honing or conditioning compound. It's going to rub it across here, get a nice generous amount in there. And then taking my knife, I'm going to Take that edge, this is why I like Scandi grinds, because I can just lay it on here. Take my finger and just push it and just tilt it upward on there to where it locks where that edge is and then just bring it backwards and follow that curvature of the blade all the way around. And however many times I go on one side, I'll do the opposite side. And I want to do this after I use my knife every single time and that will keep it razor sharp versus trying to screw around until it becomes a butter knife and then go get a bunch of different stones and play with it for 45 minutes to try to get it fixed. As long as you maintain it every time, you have nothing to worry about. Then flip it over and we'll go ahead and get that burr off of the, each edge there on the leather side. Last couple of items here you're going to see me carry for 2024 is note taking gear. I have a mechanical pencil. I have a notebook in here. We have military protractors that are designed for topographical maps, and we'll be getting into all that on my online classroom in the future. Um, it's just something nice to have. I can make notes of things while I'm out in the woods. Oh, I found this trail, or I found this at the creek, or I found this over at this grid line number, blah, 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 blah. It's just good reference material, something to have. I want to draw a picture out there, something I've seen. Just jot something down real quick from, from memory. Um, just that way I'm not relying on, I think it was there, I thought it was over there, I can't find it now. I can just write it down. And it's always something good and handy to have. Speaking of cold handle skillets, guess what? The Etsy store is open. Once again, my Etsy store is open and it's open seven days a week. We have the cold handle skillets in there between five and six of them, I believe, are in there. Military harness. We have a military demo knife in there as well. Other military surplus gear. We have the hat patches, bag patches, universal patches. They're all available overseas now as well. We have our frog gigs. We have our meat forks. We have our regular size uh, forks in there and we have our strikers that I showed you earlier that just rain sparks off some with flint some without flint. So pick your poison um, Next week as well. I'll be introducing something new. I'm not going to go into detail on that I want to be in the woods and actually show it to you 
So once I'm done with the classroom, we'll make announcements for that, and that something else is going to drop. But um, this gear is all handmade by me, and I'm currently one to two weeks out of shipping. Most orders are caught up right now. You guys slammed me, and I appreciate it. The Etsy store link is inside my video description box. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. As my gear changes a little bit, I'll go ahead and add more stuff to it, do another video like this, another bug out bag video or a get home bag video. That way you can see how my gear is evolving and how yours should as well or give you ideas for your kit. Um, once the classroom is done, I'll have the gear list for the classroom on there and you can go to my Amazon affiliate link uh, site and actually look at it and say, okay, I need this. I don't need that. I got four of those. I don't want to buy that. I got something similar. Perfect. But you'll have ideas of what you need for the classroom. More great things to come. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon affiliate link, and two, my Etsy store. Both links can be found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.